Hi there everybody, so in this video I'm going to explain for loops in Java. A for loop is similar to a while loop, however a for loop executes some code a certain amount of times. How a for loop is different from a while loop, a while loop could execute an infinite amount of times until its condition is no longer true. So with for loops, we want to do something a certain amount of times. To create a for loop, type for, parentheses, curly braces. Now within the condition of the for loop, there's three statements. Each is separated with a semicolon. We have statement one, statement two, and statement three. The first statement is used for initialization. We can create a counter to keep track of how many times we have iterated this loop. Basically, we're declaring a variable, a counter. This will be int. Now a common practice for a for loop is to create a counter named i, meaning index int i equals zero or some other number. i is going to be used as a counter within this loop, also known as a loop control variable. The second statement is a condition. When do we want to stop? Maybe we would like to execute some code 10 times. We'll continue this loop as long as i is less than 10. Now the third statement, the third statement is the step we can increment our counter of i by 1, or another number, or even decrement. After each iteration, let's increase i by 1, i++. Let's perform a test run. I'm just going to print the word pizza. So we should execute this code 10 times using this for loop. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So a for loop is good if you want to repeat some code a certain amount of times. But there's a little bit of setup you have to do. We'll need some sort of index or counter, a condition in which you want to stop, and you'll need to update the counter one way or another. Initialization, condition, update. We can also print this index of i. Rather than printing the word pizza, let's print i to see what we're working with. During the first iteration, i is 0. After our loop is complete, we increment i by 1, our counter. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We're looping 10 times, but we set i to be 0 to begin with. If I were to set i to be 1, and I want to iterate 10 times, I could say, while i is less than or equal to 10. So now we're starting at 1 and counting up to 10. We can even decrement 2. Let's set i to be 10. We'll continue this loop as long as i is greater than 0. To decrement, we'll set i to be minus minus. Now we're starting at 10 and decrementing. But we're still looping 10 times. Let's go back to the beginning. Using the update statement, we can even increment by a certain number. Instead of incrementing by 1, let's increment by 2 and see what happens. So this time we start at 1 and update our counter of i 2 each time. Or even 3. i plus equals 3. 1, 4, 7, 10. We can decrement by a given number. Let's set i to be 10. We'll continue this loop as long as i is greater than 0. And we will decrement our step. We will decrement by 2. i minus equals 2. Now we're starting at 10 and decrementing by 2. Or even 3. i minus equals 3. 10, 7, 4, 1. For this next example, we're going to accept user input. Again, we'll need a scanner. Import the scanner class and close your scanner at the end. We'll create a prompt. Enter how many times you want to loop.
I'll create a variable of max. Max will equal, use our scanner, use the next int method, and now we're going to create a loop, a for loop. Again, there's three statements, each separated with a semicolon. We'll need an index or a counter to keep track of how many times we have looped. Let's say int i equals zero. For the next statement, what's our condition? We want to continue as long as i is less than the max. i is less than our max variable. Then increment i by one. Then we'll print i or something else. Let's try this. How many times do you want to loop? Let's loop five times. One, two, three, four, five. Again, we set i to be zero, so that's why we're beginning with zero. If you would rather begin with one, we can set i to be one. Then the condition would be i is less than or equal to max. Let's try that again. Let's loop six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, now we're going to create a mini project. We'll create a program to simulate a countdown. Perhaps we have a variable of int start. Let's start at 10. We're counting down from 10. Then we'll create a for loop. We will set our index of i equal to our start. Our start variable behaves as if it was the number 10. We'll continue as long as i is greater than zero. Then we will decrement by one with i minus minus. During each iteration, let's just print i. Then when we escape the for loop, let's print happy new year. Kind of like it's a countdown to a new year. Here's what we have currently. We start at 10, count down to 1, then display Happy New Year. If you would like, we can use the thread class and have our program sleep for about one second between each loop. Here's how you can do that. After printing i, this is a little advanced Java. At this level, you don't need to understand how this works. But we're going to use the thread class, call the sleep method, then pass in an amount of milliseconds in which we would like to sleep. 1,000 milliseconds. Now Java wants us to add the following. Java wants this method of main to throw this exception if our thread is interrupted. This is intermediate Java. We will need the section of code in order for our program to sleep. After you finish this lesson, be sure to remove throws interrupted exception. We'll no longer need it. Print i, then our program is going to sleep for one second. 1,000 milliseconds. All right, and here's our mini project. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Happy New Year. Let's modify this program a little bit. Now we'll use a scanner to accept user input. Scanner scanner equals new scanner. We have already imported the class. With start, we're going to accept some user input, but we'll need a prompt. How many seconds to count down from? We will assign start to be use our scanner, then use the next int method. All right, let's try this again. Let's say I would like to count down from 20. And it looks like it's working. I'll fast forward the video till we get to the end. Three, two, one. Happy New Year. So those are four loops. We can execute some code a certain amount of times. It's very similar to a while loop. In fact, there's a lot of overlap where you could use either a for loop or a while loop. Use a for loop if you want to do something a limited amount of times. And well, everybody, those are four loops in Java.